You may be thinking that seed starting mixes are very simply potting soils ground down into fairy dust, but it turns out there is way more engineering behind what makes a seed starting mix and why you are marketed something that is much more expensive and much more different from that of a potting soil. So let's get into it. So the question becomes, am I just being marketed something so I spend more money or is there a reasoning behind this? So number one is that seeds need very specific conditions to germinate in. So whether or not potting soil gives that is something that we need to explore. Some really specific things to look at is the proper balance of water and oxygen, as well as the proper level of salt. The whole world of osmosis that we talk about when it comes to root nutrient uptake actually also applies to seeds. What this means is a big chunk of bark, a hydrophobic patch, or just an excessive clump of fertilizer can all destroy the radical of the seed long before anything germinates. So let's first look at the fibers themselves. So the physical fiber, either the coconut coir or the peat, are finer. They're shorter and they are smaller. I'm not talking about like twigs and stuff. I'm talking about the actual little speck that is potty soil. And this actually increases the moisture highways, if you will, within that potting soil. Now, the idea here is if all the fibers are pretty darn close to the same, then the physical water itself is going to be evenly distributed. You're not going to end up with dry patches or oversaturated patches because everything's relatively uniform. This is something we typically see with a premium mix where everything has been sifted to a very specific size. Seedlings cannot do wild swings from heavily moist to heavily dry. They need a very consistent level of capillary action in and around the seed itself. If you choose not to go for a premium potting soil mix, my number one recommendation would be to just at least for sure make sure that you are sifting that. Or if you are using like a, a potting soil, not a seed starting mix, make sure you're sifting it because every little air pocket, piece of twig, anything like that, all can actually interfere with the germination. The other thing that premium mixes put in is proper wetting agents. And this is to kind of reduce that hydrophobicity. If you are doing something that's slower to germinate, like for example, hot peppers or petunias or really tiny seeds, you know, petunia seeds, anything like that, I would actually encourage you to go for the finer mix. If you're doing something like peas or beans or something that's like a larger seed, a castor bean, something like that, you could probably get away with that chunkier, lower quality mix, if you will. So the next one is actually sterility. So sterility is something that we look at when it comes to seed starting mixes. This reduces you know, fungus gnats, uh, actual fungal debris, whether it's the fuzzy stuff on the surface or the stuff that attaches to the plant itself. And the idea here is not necessarily that it's been sterilized. So these soils have not, despite popular be belief, been exposed to any level of chemical. They haven't been exposed to any level of heat. What they have been exposed to or not exposed to in this case is the removal of the source material that these problem pests need to feed on. So this includes the wood debris, the compost, the manures, anything like that has been physically removed from that. This is not something you can sift out. This is not something you can remove if you choose to just go with a regular potting soil you will experience the fuzzy white stuff on the soil surface, dampening off all of these things. Um, even if you're very particular about air movement and the amount of water you give these soils, all that sort of stuff, it's very difficult to counteract this because the food source for these problems is there. It's present in that soil, but this is something that a seed starting mix actually removes from the whole factor. So essentially speaking, it's like low microbial activity soil when you have a seed starting mix, which is also why you would not want to use a seed starting mix as a potting soil in a container. So the next thing is actually the perlite itself. So the perlite you will notice in a seed starting mix is either non-existent or it is very, very fine. And it is actually a grade. So vermiculite, perlite, this all have grades. There's fine grade, there's chunky grade, there's extra chunky grade, you name it. So extra chunky grade is something you would see in like a buffet plant pot, such as an orchid, for example, or in or a monster or something of that nature. A medium grade is something that you will typically see in your regular potting soil. A chunky grade is something we'll see in a premium potting soil mix that, or a high porosity potting soil mix. You see that HP, Pro Mix HP, that usually will have a larger particulate or more particulate 
when it comes to the perlite itself. And then the seed starting mixes is much less. The idea here is to reduce that dead space. Remember the dead space? I said actually kind of singes off those roots. Well, the idea here is to add the porosity that's needed, the aeration, without causing that dying off. And that's kind of how we balance that out. This one is actually, I think, probably one of the more important ones. And it's because you, again, can't filter this out. This isn't something you can sift out of the mix if you choose to use a potting soil mix for your seed starting. That is nutrients. So nutrients, regardless if it's organic or not, has an EC, an electrical current to it. And it's because it is made of salt. Again, organic or otherwise, it does not matter. Both of them have this. And this can and will change the osmosis, the way that water moves in and out of the plant, and ultimately can harm the root formation of your seedlings. So if you did not know this, you start your seedlings in generally the smallest physical seed cell you can. So if you're doing very small petunias and stuff, you usually want to get really micro mini cells. And the idea there is that you're going to bump these plants up into a potting soil. You don't want your seedlings typically to stay inside of their regular cells for any longer than two to four weeks. I think it's probably pretty common thought that around a two-week mark is how long plants have gas in the tank when it comes to their seeds themselves. And if you have an inert soil, seed starting mix, you usually have, you know, around the two-week mark until you bump these plants up. That, shockingly enough, that small little time frame is enough time that's needed for those plant roots to form and all that sort of fun stuff. So it's really important to ensure that there's no nutrients in your soil starting mix because you want those root hairs to form. The root hairs are much different than the root proper because the root hairs have kind of exchange capacity. They have the anatomy to be able to uptake and exchange nutrients readily. So we want that those to form and want them to form healthy and in abundance before we actually bump them up or we transplant them into something else. So it's really important to keep that in mind. That is not something you can sift out, particularly if you're doing organic, because you're going to end up with the compost and manures, and those just naturally will blend in with the peat, regardless of how you sift it out. I've been saying my favorite for years is the Jiffy Premium Potting Soil or Seed Starting Mix. It's like yellow bag. If I forget to link it, let me know. I'll link it down below. Hands down, absolute favorite. I've used it for years. I've never had anything bad from it ever. The Miracle Grow one is junk because it has actual physical twigs in it, which is completely useless to me. But yeah, that's kind of my favorite. If you guys want me to compare a whole bunch of seed starting mixes, please let me know in the comments down below. I will grab some and I will compare them all and see kind of what level they all kind of land at. But yeah, you guys, get crew, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite seed starting mix is. If you make your own, what you put into it, et cetera, and so forth. There's no wrong way to garden. So garden however you like. If you didn't like anything I said, then potting soil away. You guys got this. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.